We are returning to Florida yet again for another route suggestion for Train Sim World 2. Brightline is not the only auger that runs in the area. Located just a few miles west of the FEC corridor is the South Florida Rail Corridor, operated by Tri-Rail. Many simmers know this route very well from Train Simulator as Miami to West Palm Beach. We will be talking about this beloved Train Simulator classic in today's video. Before we get into it, I do not own any footage within this video. All rights go to their respective owners and all footage within this video will be linked in the description. With, intro with introductions aside, let's get right into the video. Tri-Rail is a commuter rail line traveling between Miami Intermodal Center and Mangonia Park. The line travels for approximately 73 miles having a top speed of 79 miles an hour, and a total of 18 stations. Tri-Rail got its name from the line serving three counties. These include Palm Beach, Broward, and Miami-Dade. The line was formerly operated and owned by CSX, formerly known as the CSX Miami Subdivision. In 1989, Trail purchased track rights from CSX, and on March 29, 2015, CSX handed over dispatching and maintenance to Tri-Rail, meaning passenger trains now have signal priority over freight trains. Just like Brightline, the line travels through dense commercial areas, but also travels alongside various lakes and rivers. The most notable part of the route is located just after Fort Lauderdale, where trains cross over Osceola Creek. Trains also travel near Fort Lauderdale International Airport, Boca Raton Regional Airport, and Miami International Airport. They will also race alongside Interstate 95 for the majority of the route. Trains will also be traveling in and out of the brand new Miami Intermodal Center. This is a multi-level station that opened in 2015 for Tri-Rail. It connects directly with Miami International Airport. It is easily one of the most picturesque stations along the route, making it another major highlight on the route. Tri-Rail has one of the most unique locomotive fleets within the nation. These include the BL36PH, the GP49H-3, the EMD F40PHR-3C, and the MK EMD F40PHM-3C. The rolling stock used by these trains are bi-level coaches and Hyundai Rotom passenger coaches. Built by Brookville Equipment Corporation, the BL36PH is a passenger locomotive built exclusively for Tri-Rail. It is the first American passenger locomotive to have a 20-cylinder engine since the 1960s. The locomotive has a power output of 3,619 horsepower and has a top speed of 82 miles an hour. Twelve of these units were built for Tri-Rail between 2012 and 2015 and is the main locomotive you will be seeing on this route. In terms of sounds, the BL36PH uses an MTU V20 4000R43 Prime Mover, an E-Bell, and I believe a K5LA. Moving on, the GP49HS3 is a four-axle passenger locomotive built by EMD in 1980. They were originally used by Norfolk Southern until in 2006, Tri-Rail acquired six of their GP49s and rebuilt them into GP49HS3s. The locomotive has a max power output of 2,400 horsepower and has a top speed of 80 miles an hour. Only three of these units are still in service. In terms of sounds, the GP49HS3 uses an END 645F3B prime mover, a Nathan K5LA, and a steel bell. As of January 2021, Tri-Rail also owns three MK EMD F40PHM-3Cs and two EMD F40PHR-3Cs. These F40s were retired by Tri-Rail in 2015 with the introduction of the BL36PH. However, with an increase in services, Tri-Rail sent the F40s to Progress Rail to be rebuilt into 3Cs. 
These rebuilds make these models relatively similar to the MBTA F40 PHS 3C on Northeast Corridor boss of the Providence. Built by AMD and Morrison Nudston, the F40 PHM 3C is a rebuild of the F40 PHS 2C built by MPI. The 2Cs entered service for the operator back in 1992. The AMD F40 PHR 3C is a rebuild of two AMD F40 PHRs that originally operated for Amtrak. Trirail acquired these F40s in 1997. The specs for both these locomotives are relatively the same, having a max power output of 3,000 horsepower and a top speed of 110 miles an hour. They also share the same sounds. The F40 uses an EMD 645E3 Prime Mover, a Nathan P5, and an E Bell. Triro uses two different types of rolling stock. These include the UTDC bi-level coaches and Hyundai Rotom passenger coaches. The bi-level coaches have been in operation ever since the operator began service back in 1989. There are currently two different variants. Trail purchased 15 coaches and 6 cab cars in 1989, and 5 more cab cars from Bombardier in 1996. The cab cars from 1989 only have a single window for the engineer and were built by the Urban Transportation Development Corporation. The 1996 versions were built by Bombardier and have an additional window on the left hand side. Modern day, 5 UTDC cab cars, 13 bi level coaches, and 3 Bombardier cab cars still remain. The cab cars use a Nathan K5 LA and an E Bell. The Hyundai Rotom cab cars began operations in 2013. Trirail purchased 10 cab cars and 14 coaches. These cab cars have a, had much higher safety standards having crumple zones, making them much more crashworthy than the buy levels. The Rotom cab cars use a Nathan K2 and an e -Bell. Since Trirail owns four different types of locomotives and two types of rolling stock modern day, it makes it relatively difficult to choose what would make sense in a base pack for this route. The most logical locomotive is to add the BL36PH since it is the most common. It would also bring a locomotive that wouldn't be seen anywhere else in the nation. Dovetail could also include the F40 since they are relatively common on this route. They are also relatively similar to the MBTA F40 PHS 3C, so, so this definitely could be included as part of the base pack. The GP49s are also fairly common, but they are not as common anymore with the reintroduction of the F40s. Dovetail would most likely be best with adding the Hyundai Rotom since they are much newer and it would introduce new rolling stock to the game. Dovetail could also reuse the Caltrain Bombardier coaches and update the model to fit the Tri-Rail version, so it could also be a possibility. However, Dovetail is best off doing the BL36PH and the Hyundai Rotom since they are the most modern rolling stock in the fleet. In total, there would be 50 passenger services on this route. Trio also performs deadhead moves and depot runs. Trio has a maintenance facility at CSX's Hialeah Yard, and a small storage depot at West Palm Beach. This would most likely bump up the service count to 70 to 80 services. Trio isn't the only operator that runs on this line. The line also sees Amtrak and CSX. On the South Florida Rail Corridor, Amtrak runs its Silver Star and Silver Meteor services between New York and Miami Station. Amtrak will be serving as express trains on this route, only stopping at West Palm Beach, Delray Beach, Deerfield Beach, Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood, and Miami. Amtrak trains will not be traveling to Miami Airport, however. Currently, their plans are Amtrak to eventually serve the station, but for now, they do not. Amtrak trains will be turning at their own dedicated station just a few miles outside of Miami Airport at Hialeah Yard. The rolling stock used for the Silver Star and Silver Meteor are, the G are two General Electric P42DCs, 2-4 Amfleet 2s, 1 Cafe Schloss Lounge Amfleet 2, 1 Dining Viewliner, 2-3 Viewliner Sleepers, and 1 Baggage Viewliner. 
The P-42DC is a diesel-electric passenger locomotive built for Amtrak between 1992 and 2001. They are primarily seen on long-distance and corridor trains. The locomotive has a max power output of 4,250 horsepower and has a top speed of 110 miles an hour. 270 of these units were built for Amtrak. In terms of sounds, the, the P-42DC uses a GE-7F DL-16 Prime Mover, a Nathan K5LA or raised letter K5LA, and a General Electric Steel, Steel Bell or E-Bell. The Silver Star and Silver Meteor run daily services. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, the Silver Meteor has been suspended until March 2022. However, under the impression that the Silver Meteor is still operational, Amtrak 98 departs Miami just before the morning rush hour, and 97 arrives at Miami in the early evening. Silver Star 92 departs Miami at 11.40 a.m., and 91 arrives at Miami at 6.35 p.m. This means that there would be a total of four mainline services that players would be driving with Amtrak. Two additional services would also be added to allow the train to turn around using a balloon loop just like Boston Sprinter. Trains will back out of Miami Station, go around the balloon loop, and then reverse back into Miami Station. I personally don't see any other ways to add services on this for Amtrak other than po the possibility for some switching duties in the yard and possibly the opportunity to build a Silver Star or Silver Meteor consist but most likely there would only be 6 Amtrak services on this route. One additional detail that should be put into consideration is that southbound trains only unload passengers at all stations, and northbound trains only load passengers. This is due to the availability of tri-rail serving the area. Having Amtrak on this route, however, would still benefit the route substantially since there would be a mix of slower tri-rail commuter trains and faster Amtrak express trains. Freight also runs on this route, performed by CSX. Just like FEC, there will be a mix of mainline and local traffic running on the route. Trains will be coming in and out of CSX Hialeah Yard, not to be mistaken with FEC's Hialeah Yard. Mainline trains will be running between Hialeah Yard and West Palm Beach. There are no major yards within West Palm Beach, meaning it will have to end at a siding or red signal. Just after Mangonia Park, the line becomes single-tracked. It would make the most sense for freight trains to end at the signal right before the track merge. Most freight traffic on this route would, will still primarily be manifest trains. In terms of locomotives, Dovetail has quite a few options. If we look at the version from TS1, Dovetail chose the C40-AW. The Dash 8 is also in TSW, meaning they could get away with layering this loco onto the route. They could also add it as a base loco. But personally, I think Dovetail Games should do a new freight loco. The most common mainline freight locos that are seen on this route are Jeevos. This would make the most sense to add to the route and Delta could layer the Dash 8 onto this route. Most freight traffic can be seen at night, with some additional traffic during the day. In total, I could see about 10-20 to 20 mainline services for freight trains. The route also sees some local traffic, predominantly in Miami. CSX serves various industries within the Miami area, opening up the possibilities for adding additional spurs and branch lines to the route. There is also a lot of switching done in Hialeah Yard. For local and switching, CSX primarily uses the EMD GP40-2 and the EMD GP40-3. It's more likely Dovetail would choose the GP40-2 since they made it for Sandpatch Grade. The loco could then be layered on the Sandpatch Grade to finally bring it back into the game. But the GP40-3 would be a nice addition to the game as well. In total, I could see about 10 to 15 switching services and 5 to 10 local services. Adding up all freight services, this would add up to approximately 25 to 45 total freight services. Adding up all passenger and freight services, I could see a total of 100 to 130 services on this route. Now what makes the most sense to be added to, the, to a base pack for this route? In my personal opinion, I think the best option is the BL36PH with Hyundai Rones or Tri-Rail, the P42DC for Amtrak, and the Jeevos and GP40-2 for CSX. Dovetail could include the freight trains from this pack in layer the Dash 8 and maybe a GP38 for switching, but I personally think Dovetail should add some new CSX locos to the game. They could also get away with having CSX loco DLCs for this route. 
but with the lack in services that the that CSX would be f performing, I don't think it makes them enough sense to, to do. In terms of the other locomotives that run on Tri-Rail, I think Dovetails should make rather an F40 or GP49HS3 pack with bi-level coaches to increase the variety of Tri-Rail locomotives. In my personal opinion, I think modern day is the best option. However, another viable time period is before 2012. This is before the BO36PH entered service, and it opens up the possibility for one additional locomotive to the route. Amtrak and CSX trains would stay the same during this time period, except for CSX possibly using older locomotives within this time period. But Tri-Rail would be significantly different. The first major difference is that the F40s would not be rebuilt. The F40PHR-3C would just be an F40PHR, and the F40PHM-3C would just be a 2C. This means that they would be a lot less modern than the rebuilds. They also used a Nathan K5LA and a Steel Bell during this time period. They also used two different liveries during this time period. The F40PHMs use a livery similar to the GP49, and the F40PHRs use a green, blue, and orange livery. The GP49HS3 would also be much more common during this time period. However, during this time period, Trio would be using one additional locomotive, and this is the MK EMD F40 PHL 2. These are rebuilt GP40s that were modified for passenger use. It has a very distinct appearance compared to the other F40 models. This is also the locomotive Ducktail chose for Trio for the TS1 version of this route. Trio owned five of these units and were the locomotives used at the beginning of the service for the operator. They were retired in 2015 with the introduction of the BL36PH. These units will be using the same livery as the F40PHRs. The F40PHL uses a Nathan K5LA and a steel belt just like the unrebuilt F40s. these time periods would definitely be interesting to see, but I personally would prefer seeing a modern day timetable just because of the BL36PH. Dovetail could make a classic timetable for this route that includes the unrebuilt F4s and the F40PHL. Now in terms of the practicality of this route being added to the game, this, the route length is within Dovetail's range, clocking it at 73 miles, about the same length as Sherman Hill. Dovetail also has an Amtrak and CSX license. However, the biggest roadblock with adding this route is Tri-Rail licensing. It is very unlikely that they have one. Tri-Rail wasn't even included in the base route for TS1. It was later added as a DLC for the route, but it was unbranded. The TS1 version of this route released in 2014, one year before Tri-Rail gained track ownership of the route. So it is possible that Dovetail Games only needed an Amtrak and CSX license when making this route. They may have limited tri-rail light. They may have a limited tri-rail license that allows them to use trackage on the route, but they do not have a proper license to allow branding. This route would feel incomplete without tri-rail, which makes me believe this route is very, very unlikely to ever come out, unless they are able to get a license of tri-rail in the near future. Overall, this would be a solid U.S. passenger route to add to TSW2. The route has a wide variety of trains, and the scenery on this route is really good. The route has something for everyone, whether that be switching on local trains, mainline heavy freight, slow commuter trains, or fast express trains. This route is a classic within Train Simulator, which is why I think it should come to Train Sim World 2 in the near future. Thank you for watching, guys. If you are new to the channel, consider liking the video and subscribing. Also consider going down to the, to the description to check out my route suggestion poll where you guys can vote on, on upcoming route suggestions I should do. I will see you all in the next video. This is Crazy Dash, peace out.